Laissez le bon temps rouler. Non. Laissez, Laissez le bon temps, le bon temps rouler. rouler. Sounds great. Is the level good? Levels are good. Are we properly modulated? Okay, good. So, uh, welcome everybody to uh, the Providence En Voyage series, week seven, eight, whatever it is. Um, and this week we're in uh, New Orleans, in the Big Easy, and we're celebrating some of the best dishes from that New Orleans has to offer. And of course, I firmly believe that New Orleans, along with New England, have probably the most distinct cuisine in the in the country. Like, there's no doubt about it. And if you're like me, you grew up watching chefs like uh, Justin Wilson and, and Paul Prudhomme uh, on TV cooking Cajun and Creole food. And that's when I first sort of fell in love with it. That's certainly where I fell in love with uh, Justin Wilson, I guarantee. So we're starting off this week with a barbecued shrimp, which is, which is probably, you know, the, the, one of the most famous dishes from New Orleans. And of course, it's like a, it's a misnomer really because the shrimp were not barbecued, there's no grill involved, there's no smoke involved. And it comes from a place called Pascal's Manali, which is a little restaurant uh, there in New Orleans. And, uh, and, and the story is that it, it came to be in about 1953, when a guy that may or may not have been a wise guy returning from Chicago had this great idea for a shrimp dish that he had when he was there in Chicago. And could they possibly replicate it at Pascal's? And they did. And uh, the, the dish became an immediate hit and it's been on the menu ever since. So that's what, almost 75 years. Uh, but it's, you know, beautiful fresh shrimp. They're, uh, they should not be peeled, and ours aren't either. Um, these shrimp actually are coming from Beaufort, North Carolina. They're beautiful and they're fresh. And they're really like the only domestic source that I know of for fresh shrimp, so that's why I chose them. And th the shrimp are ready to eat just like they are. All you need to do is take it home and warm it up. All right. So I'm just gonna go over there and put it on the fire. Okay, so like I said, the, the shrimp are already cooked. All you gotta do is take them and put them in uh put them in a pan if you want again you guys can do this in a microwave because this sauce is like full of there's lots of butter there's spices uh there's parsley there's rosemary there's garlic there's white wine uh just a tiny little bit of lemon juice and all sorts of um spices you know there's uh um, if you look on the internet you may be able to find a recipe for manali spice which is what they use at the restaurant and we sort of um we sort of replicated that incredibly delicious so really that's all it takes like you know, you can heat them up another minute or two. Again, we talked about using fish testers before. You stick it in the shrimp, make sure that it feels warm inside, and uh, and they'll be good to go. And all you gotta do is plate it. So we can do that right here. Make sure you serve it with all of the sauce, every drop. And this week, uh, our pastry chef, Mac, made um, French baguettes for you uh, because you don't wanna let any of this sauce go to waste. So, I mean, I recommend that you just take the, you know, eat the shrimp, I actually, when we were testing this recipe, we were just eating the shells and everything because these shrimp are actually, the shells on these shrimp are actually pretty tender. And, uh, you know, I think, I think you'd enjoy it uh, just the way they are. And then, you know, I would bring it to the table and enjoy this and, you know, break the baguette and then dip, dip the baguette right in there. Just like that. You guys know how to do this. You were born knowing how to do this. You just still go. Oh my god. We have to cut for a minute, okay? Voila. If you want, we made a little Creole whipped butter too. So it's a lot of um, same spices that we put in the um, in the barbecue shrimp. And you can just put that on the baguette. Let me just make sure this is. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's the barbecue shrimp. Oh my god. It's so good. All right, next we have gumbo. Gumbo yaya. Yeah. So. Gumbo goes back in Louisiana. The earliest uh, recorded um, mention of it that I can find is it goes back to like 1803, where it's served at a gubernatorial function. And then again, it shows up in 1804 at a big Acadian gathering. And gumbo can be all sorts of things. Gumbo can be game, squirrel, rabbit, venison, whatever, you, whatever you're able to find down there, duck, of course. Gumbo can be chicken, gumbo can include shellfish, gumbo should include some sort of sausage. And gumbo may either have okra, 
which is a version that we've done, or gumbo file. So gumbo file was introduced to gumbo by the Choctaw Nation. It's a powder of sassafras, and, it's, and it helps to sort of like thicken the gumbo. But the thought is gumbo file was used when okra was out of season. And so cooks, you know, when okra was in season, they would use okra to thicken the gumbo, along with a dark roux. And when okra wasn't in season, they would use gumbo file. We chose to use okra because okra is in season and we got beautiful okra from our friends at uh, Tao's, uh, Kong Tao's farm. And so we're using that today, along with chicken from Mary's farm, organic air-dried chicken, fresh picked Dungeness crab, and uh, local oysters from Moro Bay, uh, grassy bar oysters as a matter of fact. So, and then of course we have andouille sausage as well. So this is another one. All you gotta do, bring it over the stove, put it on the fire, get it hot, and have at it. You could also, if you want, just pop it in the microwave, but obviously change it out of this tin, put it in something plastic, throw it in the microwave for a minute or two, and enjoy. All right, hold on. So the chicken, like we, the chicken we, we um, floured, and then we fried it lightly before we uh, made the roux. And then all of the drippings from the chicken are um, incorporated into the sauce. So, you know, once we fry the chicken, we take it out, we add the, the, the already brown flour to that, cook it just a little bit more to form our dark roux, and then we add the holy trinity of vegetables in Cajun cuisine, which is celery, onion, and green bell pepper. And then of course we have a whole bunch of spices that we blended in there. Uh, and then, as I said, okra to finish. Uh, oysters and crab, Dungeness crab, and that's pretty much it. That makes up the gumbo. Of course, there's a uh, chicken stock in there and a little bit of shellfish broth, just to reinforce the flavors of the oysters and the crab. And that's pretty much it. And um, I don't know, it's it's such a joyful thing to make a gumbo, and I think it's a joyful thing to eat. Um, and I'm super excited to be cooking it this week. So to plate that up is pretty easy. A bit of white meat, a little bit of dark meat and then spoon the oysters and the crab around and the andouille and the okra. You I don't know, you really can't go wrong with this. Just put it on the plate, that's all that matters. There we go. And then, um, you know, nobody can agree on anything really when it comes to gumbo. What ingredients should be there, what ingredients shouldn't be there, which spices to use, which hot sauce to use, okra, filet, whatever. Everybody has their own thing. But the one thing that everybody agrees on is that you gotta have a little bit of rice in with the gumbo, just kind of add it at the table, a little bit, not too much, uh, but you definitely want to have a little bit, it just makes the, I don't know, it just makes it, rounds out the experience. And then we're going to finish it with a little bit of scallions that we provided, <clears throat> and that's it. Okay, so once you have the gumbo plated, gather your friends at the table, your family at the table, open up an Abita beer, or whatever you have that you like, and um, and laissez le bon temps rouler. And then we'll talk about dessert. So, Mac, what'd you make for dessert? Banana rum and raisin bread pudding. And what's this? That's rum and caramel sauce. You want to put it on the plate? So this is, uh, you know, bread pudding is definitely one of the most um, one of the most loved desserts in, in New Orleans, and and uh, Mac made all the brioche that went into that. Um, and then there's raisins and rum and a beautiful dark caramel. And then to finish off dinner, some um, pecan praline. Um, and that's pretty much it. We hope that you enjoy this little trip to the Big Easy. I'm not wearing a mask right now, but I'm going to tell you to wear a mask. And I'm also going to tell you to support Los Angeles's restaurants. We lost so many great restaurants since this pandemic started. And we're losing more every day. So uh, we appreciate the fact that you're supporting Providence, but um, get out there and support other restaurants too. There are all sorts of restaurants in the city and cities all across this country right now that are struggling. And um, we appreciate your business, we appreciate your support, and we hope to be there for you, uh, to take care of you in our dining rooms at some point soon when this is all over. So once again, wear a mask, enjoy yourself until next week, uh, thanks a lot, Los Angeles. We'll see you soon. All right, let's give this here gumbo a try. See if that don't taste good. Mm.
Delicious, I guarantee. Indian bar when I go downtown. I go, I go one day. You don't like what the big chief says, said Jack and Moe Hey now, hey now, hey now, hey now. I go, I go one day. Jack and Moe Finale. Jack and Moe Finale.